Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this lesson um, by talking about lateral area. So the other way of figuring out the surface area for a prism is to calculate its lateral area and then add the areas of the bases to it. So um, the lateral area is actually the sum of all of the areas of the lateral faces. So the lateral faces would be these guys. So like this one corresponds to this. Um, this one is this one. And I'll try to do, like, here's this goldenrod one over here, you know, that corresponds down here. Um, and you kind of see what I'm saying. Um, but when you lay those out, you can see that it kind of makes just a big rectangle. So you can find lateral area by multiplying the perimeter of the base. So here is the perimeter of the base. And you can multiply that because that is actually, in reality, equal to this length right here. Um, by the height or the altitude, which is how tall this is, how tall this is, um, of the prism. So when we put that into formula, it looks like this. Lateral area is equal to perimeter, perimeter being the perimeter, the distance around your base, so the perimeter of the base, times the height of the entire or the length of the entire prism. So P is for your base and height is for your prism. And that's just going to be the first step when we're finding lateral area. Um, something important that I do want to point out though is I want to take a look real quick at bases. Um, for the area of the base, so this is for area. Um, the big letter B, so capital B, is going to represent in a formula um, the area of the base. I don't want this to sound too simple though because depending on the shape of your your prism, um, your base can be a different shape so you might have to use all kinds of different formulas to find that area of that base. So the bases are various polygons. Um, you can't use just a single formula to figure out the area. So some examples, you know, we've got the triangular prism where our base is a triangle. So to find that, you would do the one-half base times height in order to find your area for that um, base. So B would equal one-half base times height of the triangle, and you need to make sure you're measuring the triangle and not the side. Um, we also have... Um, cylinders where we might have a circular base. So for this one, your base is not going to use the formula like a triangle. You would use um, your area is going to be pi times your radius squared. So you would need to know the radius. And that's how you would find the area for a cylinder. Um, you might also have a trapezoid. So if you have a trapezoid, you know, your base is this trapezoid, so instead of using the other two formulas, you would need to use the trapezoid formula, which is going to be base 1 plus base 2. All of that divided by 2, and then multiply that final answer by the height of the trapezoid. So um, the height being this length right here. Um, oh, my bad. It's not that. It's this. Thinking of the prism. So let me highlight that. So you would have... Okay, so for the trapezoid, you would do base 1, which is either your top or your bottom. Add that with the length of your second base. And then you're going to divide that by 2. And then you're going to multiply that answer by the height of the trapezoid. So depending on which base you're working with, it could be difficult to find that area. It might not just be a simple formula. Um, and you're going to have to think about which formula to use depending on what base you have. But B, that capital B, is going to represent the area of the base. Um, right now for review, and I'm not going to give you the answers to this. You're actually going to have to find them on your own. But I want you to list on your notes the area formulas for these four um, shapes, for a rectangle, for a circle, a triangle, and a trapezoid. So go ahead and take the time right now to write those down in your notes so that you'll have them handy when you're working on these problems. So the surface area of a prism is the sum of the lateral 
area plus the area of its two bases. So pretty much that's what I was just explaining to you with the picture. Um, and the formula looks like this. Surface area, Cori prism, equals lateral area plus our two bases. So we had a formula for lateral area, so we kind of have to do that separately. Then we add in the two bases. So let's go ahead and do an example. So this is the third example in our notes. And um, I'll go ahead and work through this one with you. But um, we are going to find the surface area by using the formula for lateral area and for surface area. But to find lateral area, I need to do my perimeter times the height of my prism. So first of all, I need to figure out what do I need the perimeter of? And if you recall, I said we needed the perimeter of the base. So the base shape is a triangle in this picture. So we need to find the perimeter of this base. Um, and the way we're going to do that is by going around the edge. So we need to take 4 plus the length of this edge, which isn't stated, but because we see um, a height of 6 and a hypotenuse of 7, we know that because um, this side is going to be equal to this side because we've got that 90 degree angle for the altitude that, you know, this is also 7. So we're going to add 4 plus 7 and then plus the third side, which was also 7. So that equals 18. So the perimeter of our, um, our base is 18. Now we need to multiply that times the height. So as you can see, um, our height is going to be the height of our prism, so from base to base. So we want to look for that other base, which is back here at the back, um, that other triangle back there. We want to know what is the length between those two bases, which is going to be our height. So technically, the, the prism we're measuring right here is laying on its side. It's not sitting up like we would want it to be sitting up. Um, but the length that we're looking for is this 12 centimeters here because the distance from this point to this point is 12. So we need to take the perimeter, which was 18, and we need to multiply that times the height of the prism, which is 12. So 18 times 12 is equal to 216. Um, this is technically for the area of a rectangle. Remember, it was, you know, these three pieces all the way around, um, which is going to be measured in square centimeters. So there's my centimeters squared. So our first step is taken care of. We've got 216 cubic centimeter, I'm sorry, square centimeters for our step one. So what this means is that I found this area in green plus this area on the bottom in green plus this area on the side in green. What this does not include is the area in the front, the area of this triangle, or the area of the triangle at the back, which is this triangle. So we need to take what we've already measured and we need to add to that the bases, so the 2B. So for this base we have a triangle, so our area is going to equal out one half of our base of our triangle times our height. And this is just for one of our triangles. And don't forget that we have two. So let's go ahead and start um, plugging in our values. So the base of this triangle is four centimeters. So I'm going to put a four right here. And the height is going to be the height of our altitude. So we really have to be careful make sure it's at a right angle. So it's not going to be our 7 because that's the length of the side. I actually want to use this altitude, which is 6 centimeters. So I'm going to throw my 6 in there. Um, so if I go ahead and chug it out, you know, 4 times 6 is 24. Well, half of 24 is 12. The area of just one of these is actually 12 square centimeters. But I have two of them, so it's going to be a total of 24 square centimeters. 
So now to find my surface area, I simply need to combine the two. So I need to take my lateral area, which was equal to 216, and I need to add to that the value for my two bases, which was 24 um, square centimeters, so 216 plus 24, and that ends up equaling 239 square centimeters. So that's actually our final answer for the surface area of this triangular prism. So for our fourth and final example, final example, I'm going to want you to go ahead and try this one yourself. But um, you have a prism right here that is um, pink in color. It's beautiful. And you need to find the surface area of the prism using the formulas for lateral area and for surface area. So here are those formulas. Um, go ahead and pause this. I will continue to kind of get you started, but see if you can attempt to solve the entire thing without my help. And then when you finish this up, go ahead and bring it to me so that I can sign off and get you your next step. So if you haven't figured it out yet, um, we're going to start with our lateral area. The hardest part about this one, I guess, is picking which of these you want to have as the base because really there's no right or wrong answer for this one. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick the the two small pieces just because for some reason to me that's just what I feel like is is correct so I'm gonna pick these as my bases and again this doesn't necessarily mean that those are the bases and if you picked two different faces to be your bases that won't give you the the wrong answer it'll give you a different process, but it won't be incorrect. Um, so keep that in mind as you're, you're kind of working through this. So my first step though is to do the perimeter of my base. So the perimeter is going to be 9 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4. And because I actually want you to work on this yourself, I'm not going to give you know answers or anything, but you're going to multiply this times the height of the base, I'm sorry, of the prism. So if these are your bases, you want to connect the bases and that's your height. So our height for this one is 16. So that would be your, your, your step to find the answer for lateral area. And then step two is going to be finding the, the area of the two bases before we add them together. So our base is down here, as I said earlier, and our base, because we have two of them, um, is just going to be our base times height. So we just substitute in our base and our height for, uh, for the base that we're using. So um, see if you can figure that out. You're going to end up getting that number plus whatever this number is, and you're going to combine them. And that will be your answer.